This is Echo 3, and let's discuss going to dress. After mastering the Mun and Minmus, the Duna system is a logical next step, but where do you go after that? After reading a couple articles about what humanity might do after visiting Mars, I found out that an object in the asteroid belt seemed like the next logical step, so that's what we're going to do in our game. As you construct your craft, I would recommend you check a Delta V map to make sure that you're actually able to complete the mission that you're intending to. And because Dress is in such an inclined orbit, it can be a little tricky. It will take anywhere from 5,600 meters per second all the way up to 7,700 meters per second of Delta V once you are in orbit around Kerbin to be able to go to Dress, land, and return back to Kerbin. The surface gravity on Dress is less than that of the MUN, so any craft that's able to land and take off from the MUN is able to do so on Dress. Right now I'm finishing up my cruiser stage. This will take me from low Kerbin orbit to most of the way into orbit around Dress. Although three Wolfhound engines is probably a bit of overkill, one would most likely have been sufficient. Now on these decouplers, we're going to put on our pieces for exploring Dress. This side I'm going to have a Science Junior and a Mystery Goo, and on the other side we're going to build a rover. I am going to be watching the Kerbal Engineer readout up top and making sure that my parts are balanced as far as the weight. You can see the torque indicator up there, and I want that to be very close to zero so that the craft will want to fly straight. Another way to add a rover to your craft is through the use of sub-assemblies, but this is a very tiny rover and I'm not too worried about getting all the details right, but if you're going to build a more complex rover, I would suggest building it first in like this place plane hangar and then attaching it onto your craft. We'll go ahead and load this thing with a couple command chairs, a solar panel, and a variety of science experiments. I do need the reaction wheels on this because when I decouple, it's going to fly off of this craft so that the reaction wheels will be able to keep this thing stable, although I will want to use an action group so that I can turn on the reaction wheels when needed and turn them off when I'm just driving around, otherwise it'll just flip the craft around. I'm using the offset tool on the mystery goo so that I can keep my center of mass in line with the center of thrust. Now let's throw this upper stage in a big fairing that'll just help keep things protected as we ascend through the lower atmosphere of Kerbin. Now let's build the first stage of our rocket. This needs to boost us up most of the way into orbit. I like to use my first stage to have around 3,000 meters per second of delta V and get my craft almost all the way into orbit. And as a general rule, I like to have a starting thrust to weight ratio around 1.3 to 1.5. I like to have a few fins on the bottom of my craft just to help make sure that it is aerodynamically stable on ascent and we can add just a little bit more fuel because our thrust to weight ratio is high enough. You know what, let's add a couple more solar panels just to make sure that one of them is always able to have direct sunlight and we won't have to worry about running out of power on this mission. Now, looking over my Delta V amounts, we are definitely on the low end for a dress mission, although we are within the realm of doable, but we need to be very careful with our piloting, otherwise we're going to run out of Delta V and not get our Kerbals home. I was reading one paper and they were thinking that humanity would probably need to be using something like the nerve engines or some kind of nuclear power before we are actually going to be going out further than missions to Mars. So maybe you'd want to use something like the nerve for your missions out to dress as opposed to something like the wolfhound. I'm going to be using this maneuver tool that was added in 1.12 to make my maneuver out to dress. This is a great tool. It makes going interplanetary a lot easier for newer players. Sorry console players, this has not been added for you guys yet. If you don't have access to 1.12 yet, I would suggest using Alex Moon's transfer calculator. It does make going interplanetary a lot easier and gives you the exact values and the phase angles that you'll need to use. Going to dress is about as far out as I would consider going using just the regular chemical rockets. If you're going to go any further, I would suggest using something like the Nerve for going out to Jewel or Elu. Or if you're going to go to the inner planets, especially Moho, you can look at using the ion engines. I set up a small mid-course correction burn so that I can approach dress and come in with a very low periapsis around its equator. I am making liberal use of the time warp in the game, although even now my game is sped up by eight times additional from that with my footage. I would recommend using a mod like Better Time Warp to help some of these long waits be a little bit more manageable. For small burns like this mid-course correction burn, you might want to turn down the thrust on your engines all the way down to like 1% or something but make sure you turn it back up all the way when you need to make your insertion burn. So far, everything on our mission has been going to plan. 
off there in the distance you can see dress I have the mod distant object enhancement which lets me see and identify objects far off in the sky like that now for our insertion burn now there has been a joke around the community for a long time that dress doesn't really exist it's just the mun or whatever obviously here it is in the game whatever some people don't find it to be that interesting there is one feature on the game as far as a large canyon on dress that you might find particularly fun to visit we're not going to go visit that right now but there are some interesting places on dress it's not the mun it actually is a little smaller than the mun this area looks pretty flat so i think we'll try landing here I often like using the suicide burn counter up at the top there with my Kerbal Engineer readout to help me know exactly when to start my landing burns. It does help me be just a little bit more efficient when I come down and try to land on a different planet. If you notice that other rover on the surface of the planet, that is the exact same rover that's on the side of this rocket. That's because I flew this mission already once and rebuilt the rocket for this video. I like to make sure that what I make has worked already. It looks like we have had a little problems with the landing. That's right i will use our reaction wheels and use the gear and extend and retract them until we can finally there we go we got it up we're all right this is just a tutorial sandbox game showing how to go to dress and come back so these science experiments really don't have any purpose if you are interested in seeing me play a science mode game or another career mode game with or without mods why don't you leave a comment down there and give me your suggestions for future content i always love hearing from you guys and knowing what you like to see and we quickly switch over to the rover turn on the reaction wheels and land this thing perfectly that's why we got jeb on this if this were a career mode game or a science mode game, we could take this around to the different biomes and use all those different science experiments and then bring them back to our ship. As is, there really isn't much purpose to this. It's just fun to do. And if you like to have fun and just explore the system, that's fine. Now we'll go ahead and plant our Echo 3 flag, just saying that we have been here on a well-dressed mission. And this is probably the part of the show where most YouTubers will tell you to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell button. I'm not really one of those YouTubers, so you can go ahead and make up your own mind on what to do. Since this is just a sandbox game, there really isn't much more for us to do on the surface, so we'll go ahead and set Kerbin as our target and get back into orbit. Now I'm going to go ahead and tilt this thing almost directly over on the ascent. It helps the ascent be a little bit more efficient. Here at my apoapsis, I'm going to make a maneuver and just try to get into a circular orbit. Now, I am wanting to use the maneuver feature here and get myself a uh, maneuver to go back to Kerbin. However, what I'm noticing, this is not getting me a very good encounter. So we need to figure out how we're going to be able to get back to Kerbin. Last time I ran this mission, everything worked very well and the maneuver tool got me to dress and it got me home again without any hiccups. This time I'm really struggling and my Delta V margin is extremely tight. So I am thinking we're gonna have to try something else to get home because I do not have a very good encounter at all with Kerbin. If I were to use the maneuver that the game is recommending, I would have to make a pretty substantial mid-course correction burn to get back into Kerbin's atmosphere. I don't have enough Delta V left in my budget to do that. So I am looking at where Dress's orbital plane intersects Kerbin's orbital plane, and I'm gonna try and make a maneuver at our ascending node. So the idea here is I'm gonna make a maneuver at our ascending node, and that will go all the way down to Kerbin's orbit. That way my periapsis will be where my descending node is on Kerbin's orbit. Now I have used this technique before when I've tried going from Kerbin to Eve and back, and it's worked out pretty well for me in the past. So I'm gonna try and use that again. So I make this maneuver here on Dress, and I'm gonna see where my ascending and descending nodes even are and so I'm gonna have to time warp until dress there is close to the ascending node and then I can escape dresses sphere of influence there and burn all the way down to Kerbin's orbit now just kind of looking at how much Delta V this is going to take that will not give me a lot of extra room for making additional maneuvers in interplanetary space to get my encounter with Kerbin so we're gonna have to be very careful with the remainder of our Delta V budget 
this is looking like it's going to be one of my tightest missions ever. Why don't you tell me what one of your closest missions ever was? How close did you ever have to cut it on your way back to Kerbin? Or did you even have to get out and use your RCS from your Kerbals to push and get home? We still don't have an encounter with Kerbin yet, so I'm going to be messing around with the maneuver node and even using the plus and minus orbit buttons. So we might have to lap around the solar system a few times to get something that's going to be close. I'm going to have to spend time so I don't have to spend as much Delta V. And it looks like we've got a pretty good close approach there, so we will be able to make one additional maneuver and probably get home now. Now, for most of this video, I have sped up my footage, although for making these maneuvers, I have slowed it down so you can better see what I am doing. In this case, I just needed a small radial burn so that I can get a pretty close encounter. I'm very glad that I decided not to be playing with any life support mods right now because I don't think I would have budgeted for being in space this long. Although if you'd like to see me play with any specific mods, why don't you let me know what you are thinking? Now we just need to time warp until our maneuver. Now this is going to take a while of in-game time because I needed to set this maneuver several orbits in the future. This is something you can do also when you're trying to do rendezvous and docking is to use the plus orbit button on the maneuver icon there. It is really helpful for setting up a very close encounter. Sometimes you don't get a very good encounter on your first orbit, but maybe in a few orbits you can get something that'll work out a lot better, which is what I did here. I was able to make a smaller maneuver so I didn't have to force things so much. I could spend a lot more time and save on a lot of Delta V, which with as tight as I am, I really need to look at saving Delta V. All right, now we're going to be able to finally make our maneuver. Now I'm going to keep a very close eye on that closest approach marker on my orbit line there. You can right click on those icons down there and make sure that you get exactly what you want. So that's, that's what I'm doing. That's how I'm watching those numbers. And I do not have a lot of extra budget here to have to make any corrections on my burns. So I need to really be careful and watch what I'm doing and not overburn on anything either. Now our first maneuver did not result in an encounter inside of Kerbin's Sphere of Influence. So we're going to make this second maneuver. And the idea here is I need to get my periapsis to end up inside of Kerbin's atmosphere so that we can aero break and slow down. That will let us then return our Kerbals safely back to the surface of Kerbin. We have a heat shield, so that won't be any problem and we won't be coming like that fast anyway. So we have 65 meters per second of Delta V to make this happen. Let's make sure that we are able to actually make this work. So if any maneuver goes over 65 meters per second. It is no good. Although this looks like it is going to work. I think we have just enough to actually get home. I'm just going to play around with this a little bit, but it looks like for 65 meters per second of Delta V, we can actually get home. Now we also have one more trick up our sleeve. We have an engineer on our craft, which means that we can have him get out and remove a few parts. That way, if we are able to decrease our mass just a little bit, it may give us just slightly more Delta V and that might be what it takes to get this thing home. Now we are going to just carefully make our burn, watching our periapsis as we come in. Again, I like to right click on that just to make sure that it is exactly where I need it to be. And I also decrease the thrust on my engine so that I don't accidentally overburn because I don't want to come in too deep in the atmosphere either. And then we will not slow down sufficiently and smash into the surface. It looks like we have a great trajectory. I'm just going to time warp until we hit the atmosphere. I am Echo3, and thanks for joining me on this perfectly optimized mission to dress. I will see you next time.